Hi, my name is Sarah DeHaan and I am a first year Masters of Divinity student with a concentration in racial justice um, and I originally hail from Kalamazoo, Michigan. I was asked to answer the question, what does public theology or public ministry look like to me in life and work and seminary amidst this time of social distancing and isolation? Um, and the first thing that came to my mind is the act of showing up. Um, so whether that means showing up for people in a literal sense, like making grocery runs and pharmacy runs for those who don't have the means, um, or showing up for others in more of an emotional capacity um, and being a pillar of peace and comfort um, for those who might need a little extra support. Um, and while showing up for others is a very natural aspect of public ministry and ministry in general, um, the act of showing up also means that we need to show up for ourselves um, and our own relationships with God. Um, this is a weird and scary time of uncertainty and is forcing us all to dive a little deeper into what it means to be in relationship with ourselves and with others and with God and to find ways to authentically show up for others and ourselves and God. Um, we're currently living through a pandemic, um, a pandemic I'm sure that none of us thought we'd experience in our lifetimes. And it's important that we make some very necessary changes in our routines and our lives to take into account the stress that is being put on our bodies. Um, so while yes, during this time of uncertainty, we need to show up for our communities, our seminaries, our friends, our families, it's also very important that we're showing up for ourselves and that we're taking care of ourselves. Um, by taking necessary Sabbath and reconnecting with our faith and our spiritual practices. As much as it pains me <laughs> to admit it, moving forward, life and ministry more than likely will never look the same. Um, that grief that we feel now regarding the loss of life is something that we'll continue to carry with us even after things slow down. We'll continue to carry the hurt from the loss of loved ones, from the goodbyes we never had the opportunity to give, and from the life changing so drastically amidst all of this. We need to be able to show up for ourselves and to give us space and time to grieve and to readjust to these new ways of life and ministry. So to close, I wanted to share um, a community poem from NPR titled, If the Trees Can Keep Dancing, So Can I. Um, this poem describes how people have been affected by this global pandemic um, and it captures some of the ways that people are coping with this uncertainty and this crisis. What I am learning about grief is that it sits in the space between laughs, comes in the dark, steals the warmth from the bed covers, threads sleep with thin tendrils, is a hauntingly familiar song and yet I can't remember the words. What I'm learning about grief is that it rolls like a heavy mist, settles into the crevices, lingers on the skin, visits, then visits again, lurking under my chair, and when I'm not watching, reaches out her tiny claws and bats my ankles. Grief sneaks up on you. You find yourself on your couch with a well of rage, living in the pit of your stomach and nowhere for it to go, and it chokes you. What I'm learning about grief is that it can come like a whisper or storm through, though as loud as thunder. It leaves a hollow to be filled with a new planting. And when you wake for another day that feels oddly the same as the last, it crawls right back into your lap. An ocean of tears, so you vary the crawl with the butterfly, the backstroke with the breaststroke. At some point, drowning is no longer an option. What I'm learning about grief is that it is a language. Suffering is its own speech. It will not go away just because you won't look it in the eye. He rides shotgun with you when you go by old familiar places. Eventually, you will get closer and he will say, see, it's not so bad, I got your back. This pandemic, this tragedy, this fulcrum of life is a shovel unearthing secrets we wish would stay buried. I learned that I am ashamed I love solitude. Hard times call for soft people. There is softness in stillness, in staying home, in distractions deleted, in a togetherness that stretches great distances. What I'm learning about grief is not found in mint leaves floating in a glass of tears boiled thrice over. It is an acquired taste which we never crave. It is like nachos, staying up late, watching Scandinavian murder shows, sleeping in and eating cake for breakfast. It drips like water, it gets in everywhere. Through the small unseen fissures in the ceiling, you can ignore it like dust. Just keep yourself busy with laundry and living. 
grief shows up unannounced, like when your husband tells you last October that he's never loved you and wants permission to leave. So you borrow the ache into carefully guarded well, and you wonder if that means the memories have to go there too. What I'm learning about grief is that it can turn you into someone you don't want to be, can help you become someone you never thought you could be, is that it transcends color, race, religion, gender, is that it's an old lover that won't leave, trying to hold your hand again, that it aches in the arches of feet, that its mother is lost, its father change, make room for it, is that tiny losses add up, the missed first party my son was to attend, the school days he yearns for with his friends, I tell him it will be over soon. What I'm learning about grief, I learned a long time ago. Knead grief as you would bread, weave grief as you would thread. There is no vaccine against it. We can't develop antibodies against it. It is something I have and something you have, but in these times, it is something we have. It is anger and denial. It is chaotic laughter from splintered memories. It is jagged cries and single tears. It is numb and indifferent. It is the pinprick of light promising a slow semblance of normalty returned. What I'm learning about grief is to acknowledge its presence, its many forms and guises, then to use it while reaching out, connected to everyone who is braving this same storm. What I'm learning about grief is that it is still learning about me, learning that I am strong and resilient. If the trees can keep dancing, so can I. Thanks.